In the previous episode, we saw how the warrior rabbit went inside that hole to explore it and got surprised seeing a whole different underwater dimension full of mysterious sea creatures. There he saw all the sea monsters that died from getting poisoned by the tower manager's juice. He also saw the giant eel. So after extracting its core, he tied the eel on the rope. As he was about to leave, a giant shark attacked him. He somehow dodged the attack, but the shark took a huge bite of the giant eel, which made the rope tight, squeezing the warrior rabbit and making it difficult for him to breathe. Seo Jun, sensing something is not right, hurriedly pulled the rope and was shocked to see the fainted warrior rabbit. Seo Jun got worried and panicked seeing the warrior rabbit unconscious. He gently picked up the warrior rabbit in his arms and started to shout his name, but the warrior rabbit was still not responding. Seo Jun was getting more and more worried and panicked, but the warrior rabbit remained unconscious. Everyone got panicked and worried, from the baby queen bee to the cart rabbit. Seo Jun started to cry and worry, begging the warrior rabbit to wake up. Seo Jun gently kept the warrior rabbit outside the pond, took his dagger and the pendant aside, and started tapping his chest continuously, shouting to wake up. Even Theo from the side was worried and was shouting for the warrior rabbit to wake up. Slowly, everyone worriedly ran near Seo Jun. The chubby rabbit was taking care of the baby rabbits while the mommy rabbit was crying in shock, and the husband rabbit with all the rabbits was too shocked and worried to talk. Seo Jun hurriedly took his hat and gave it to the baby queen bee to keep it safe. Seo Jun had a plan in his mind to save the warrior rabbit which was mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Seo Jun slowly approached his face toward the fainted warrior rabbit to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth treatment. But as soon as the warrior rabbit sensed Seo Jun's stinky breath, he woke up and spitted all the water stored in his stomach into Seo Jun's mouth. Seeing the warrior rabbit alive, everyone got happy. Momi and husband rabbit tightly hugged the warrior rabbit, while the sickle rabbit was too emotionally overwhelmed to even talk. Well, everyone was very, very happy and glad the warrior rabbit was alive. But Seo Jun, on the other hand, started to cough, coughing all the water out from his mouth that he swallowed, shouting. But after seeing the warrior rabbit alive, Seo Jun also got emotional, and he started to cry in joy. The baby queen bee was also glad to see the warrior rabbit alive, but the warrior rabbit was not happy. He started to shout, asking what Seo Jun was up to while he was fainted. He didn't want his first kiss to be with Seo Jun. He's not gay, you know? Seo Jun also got annoyed, saying to stop complaining, saying he also almost sacrificed his first kiss to save him. Meanwhile, Aileen was watching this joyful moment from her crystal ball. While clinging to her bead sheet, she got a little shy hearing Seo Jun is single, a virgin, and hasn't even kissed anyone, meaning she still has a chance. Well, just like Seo Jun, you can also dive into a fantasy world with the best graphics around, brutal boss battles, deep tactical gameplay, and literally hundreds of thick champions for you to meet and collect. My favorite champions is Vizix, because she is thick. I mean very powerful. But it is not the end. One of the biggest misconceptions is that Raid has no depth, but it is a fat ass misunderstanding. You can literally play Raid for years without ever getting bored. With over 800 heroes, PvE, PvP, and CVC, I don't even know what CVC is. It really is a world you can easily immerse yourself in. It's super challenging and requires your full concentration, but if you don't have the time to play, no worries. Raid also has an auto-battler function, so you can get busy with your girlfriend while the auto-battler does the work for you. Lastly, you don't have to pay to get stronger. There are many events every month to help you grow stronger, like the Curse City. It features 100 stages, including battles against two raid bosses simultaneously. Haven't started playing yet? Don't miss out the Thick Champions. Click my link in pinned comment, or scan my QR code for exclusive bonuses of 500k silver energy and chicken plus Thick Juliana at level 15. And you can also join my clan Asura Recaps and we can play together. So just hit my link in the description, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Now let's continue to the video. Seo Jun, still angry and wearing his straw hat, asked if he's really glad that the warrior rabbit is alive. He wondered why the water from the warrior rabbit's mouth was salty. Then the tower manager explained to Seo Jun that the warrior rabbit must have gone to the Sea of Dimensions, which left Seo Jun confused as he heard about it for the first time. So the tower manager explained that the Sea of Dimensions is a place that is in between the floors of the tower. Like there is land in the tower, there is also a vast ocean in the tower, but no one has ever known how to enter that ocean dimension. No one knows what is inside that ocean and how to actually go into the ocean. In some ultra-rare cases, there exist water holes that lead to the dimension of seas, but even if anyone finds it, 
it is too dangerous to explore it. Like the tower in the Dimensional Sea, there are also floors from 1 to 100. Hearing one of the mysteries of how sea creatures were appearing in the fresh small pond got solved, then Seo Jun curiously asked the warrior rabbit if he found anything interesting. The warrior rabbit proudly opened his bag, and Theo and Seo Jun watched it with excitement. Finally, the warrior rabbit took out the jelly-like thing he found inside the fish, and the system notified Seo Jun that this is the core of a giant electric eel. This left Seo Jun and Theo shocked. As Seo Jun held the core in his hand, the system explained that this is the core of a giant electric eel that lives 1,000 years, and after consuming it, the user will learn an A-rank skill named Rain and Thunder, but the required to learn the skill was to have a minimum of 10 mana. Well, Seo Jun was very excited and started to shout and jump in excitement not because of the core of the giant electric eel, it was because now he would be able to eat delicious seafood. Excited, Seo Jun asked the warrior rabbit if he also brought the giant electric eel with him, and the warrior rabbit nodded in reply. Then the warrior rabbit started to pull the onion rope, and the water started to splatter heavily. With a heavy pull, the warrior rabbit pulled the giant eel out, and as soon as everyone saw it, they got shocked. Seo Jun, Theo, and all the rabbits were just too shocked to even talk, and the chubby rabbit, well, he started to drool, thinking how delicious the meat would be. But then something unexpected happened. Suddenly, many piranhas and crayfish started to jump out from the pond. They got attracted to the blood of the giant. This left Seo Jun and everyone shocked. Seeing the pond full of piranhas and crayfish, Seo Jun got emotional. Happily, he raised the warrior rabbit high, hugging him and praising him for bringing all the proteins back into the pond. Everyone was happy, and Theo, well, he just wanted to take a big fat bite of the eel. So Seo Jun announced he would make a very mouth-watering dish with the giant eel, making everyone excited. The next moment, we see Seo Jun making a delicious, soul-touching soup. After it was done, everyone started to eat it. The silver wolves and the whole rabbit family were eating piranha and giant eel soup, while the Terminators were munching on onion leaves. Meanwhile, Theo finally revealed everything that Dongshik said to him, from how Seo Jun's crops made the outside world crazy, and because of that, even his family got into danger. Seo Jun can't believe how his cherries have gotten so popular on Earth, but after hearing that Dongshik is doing everything to make sure Seo Jun's family remains safe, he got relieved. Then he instructed Theo, the next time he meets Dongshik, Theo has to ask him about in detail how Dongshik will protect his family. Theo agreed. Then Seo Jun thought that Dongshik from Phoenix Guild has indeed helped Seo Jun from the start, and he is really grateful to him, so he thought to do something to return the favor. So Theo informed Seo Jun that he noticed that Dongshik really likes Seo Jun's cherry. So Seo Jun decided to gift Dongshik some of his high quality cherries with other special crops that are not for sale. But Theo was not interested in this. He jumped into Seo Jun's lap and asked for some churros. Seo Jun inserted his hand into his pocket to take the churro out, and the golden eel core rolled out from his pocket, surprising Theo. When Theo asked what that is, Seo Jun explained that it's the core of a giant eel that the warrior rabbit found. Seo Jun got too focused on catching the piranhas and making food that he totally forgot about this. He explained to them that if one will eat it, that person can get a skill. Curious, Theo asked that the golden ball smells delicious and asked what the name of the skill is. Seo Jun said the system said it was something like rain and thunder, so according to the name, it should be an electric skill. As soon as Theo heard the term electric, he backed off and started hissing, saying he hated electric and to put that ugly thing away from him. But Seo Jun, on the other hand, while clutching the core in his hand tightly, said he's very excited. Then he started to laugh loudly, saying from the day he came into the tower, he only learned skills related to farming. But now he got the chance to learn a skill related to fighting, and he finally feels like he has started to become a real player. Curious, Theo asked, why is he not eating the core and learning the skill? And Seo Jun, with a depressed face while sobbing, holding the core in his hands, explained, To learn the skill, one needs to make more than 10 mana, but he only have 8.05 mana, so he can't learn the skill for now. To increase his mana, Seo Jun have to eat the cherry tomato every day to reach 10 mana very soon. Theo, on the other hand, after hearing this, started to laugh his lungs out, saying, He can't believe Seo Jun has so little mana and is so weak. This made Seo Jun angry, and while pointing his hand toward Theo, Seo Jun started to ask, If Theo see laughing so much, that means he must have more mana than Seo Jun, right? But Theo continued to laugh, holding his stomach without replying. Then, 
After a while of constantly getting shouted at from Seo Jun to tell him how much his mana is, Theo turned around and, while showing his butt to Seo Jun, said he's not going to tell how much his mana is, leaving Seo Jun extremely annoyed. So, to find out, Seo Jun quickly made Theo wear the light emitting necklace, and as soon as he did, a bright light started to emit that almost made everyone blind, which once again made Seo Jun depressed. He, while banging his hand on the ground, said, he can't believe how even a little cat has more mana than him. But Theo, on the other hand, standing beside Seo Jun with a proud face, said not to worry as he will do everything to protect Seo Jun. Then the baby bear also came, trying to comfort Seo Jun. Then Seo saw everyone eating their food dedicatedly, and Seo Jun slowly approached the Silver Wolf gang, asking if the food was to their liking. But as soon as they saw Seo Jun, they bowed down, addressing Seo Jun with respect, saying the food was very delicious, and they are very grateful for it. This made Seo Jun a little awkward, and he said not to bow down to him every time they see him. But the wolves, with great admiration, replied, Seo Jun is sharing such precious food with them. How can they not be grateful and show their respect? Then Seo Jun noticed the captain, a little worried, and asked if he was thinking about his family and all his clan members, how they were doing. The captain replied, Seo Jun is indeed the great black dragon, as he seems ma. The captain was really worried. Seo Jun was indeed eating his stomach full, but all his family members and his clan members were still hungry. Seo Jun, on the other hand, hearing this, explained not to worry about this small matter. He said the blue moon is going to come very soon. So if the silver wolves help Seo Jun in the field, he will make sure to give them a lot of fishes for their clan members. Hearing this, the wolves once again bowed down and started to praise Seo Jun like a god, which once again left him in an awkward position. Then Seo Jun, addressing Theo as the president, asked to plant and harvest the crops that got delayed. So Theo excitedly went to do his job and commanded the wolves to help. Then Seo Jun turned towards the minotaurs, saying they should also get ready. Tomorrow morning, they have to go on a very important journey, taking Seo Jun with them. This left them confused. When X number three asked where they have to go, Seo Jun, with a smirking face, replied, they will be going to meet the Minotaur King, as he has a debt to collect from him. As soon as the Minotaurs heard this, they got bewildered. In shock, all the onion leaves fell from their mouth. As the scene shifts, we come to the waypoint of the 99th floor and see that all the oxes were eating the green onion leaves, which were brought to them by their Minotaur King. All of them were literally in heaven, but why in hell does it seem like they are getting orgasms? Anyways, back on story, but he can't say the same for the Minotaur King. Well, he was ashamed by his action, knowing that he messed up big time. He just went to the territory border to look for Ox 3 and Rainy Mountain, but instead of finding them, he stole these mysterious leaves. As soon as he saw these green leaves and smelled the sweet smell, all his senses at that time vanished. I am telling you, Seo Jun is secretly adding marijuana in them. As soon as he took a bite, all his vision got blurry. He can't even remember the faces of the ones standing there. He only remembers the crimson bear and a small farmer rabbit, that's all. The king knew that he should be disqualified as the Black Minotaur Warrior and the Black Minotaur King, but he clenched his fist, saying he will make sure to pay back ten times the prices for his act, as the blue moon is coming. And after every blue moon, he can't leave the waypoint and go outside to explore for only one hour. As a tower boss, he can't leave the waypoint, so he only got that one hour. But then he wondered, how in the hell will he pay? With this, the episode ends here. Write 46 incher in the comment, and don't forget to download Raid Shadow Legends using my link in the description or by scanning this QR code. Goodbye.